Hi everyone, this is Michael Eilbrock uh, with uh, Diesel Laptops and uh, today I'm going to be doing a tech tip video and I'm going to be uh, explaining uh, how a pulse width modulated accelerator pedal um, actually works, how the signal actually is interpreted uh, to the computer. Uh, so unlike with regular accelerator pedals like an analog style where you look at the uh, just the voltage output um, on a pulse width modulated style pedal it actually communicates signal with a certain frequency okay so if you look here on my software I have I have jaw test running and you can see that I have three PIDs up here I have accelerator pedal pos position percentage and then I have signal PW PWM accelerator pedal one and signal PWM accelerator pedal two. All right, so on the software here, it doesn't give you voltage pins. Okay, so you don't really know what voltage you are getting on the software. You have to look at your percentages. Okay, so just to show this real quick, I'm going to press on the accelerator pedal just so everyone can get an idea of what the signals look like when I have the accelerator pedal fully pressed okay so I'm gonna push on the accelerator pedal okay so I've got the pedal pushed all the way down and signal 2 is almost at 90 percent and then signal 1 is at about 44 45 percent so how the computer uh, gets these signals is it looks at the difference between the two signals and then if it's off by a certain percentage then it will log a fault code uh, for your pedal okay now I bet your next question is how do you test this uh, circuit um, can you only use a scope can you use a digital volt ohm meter and you can actually use both pieces of equipment if you want to okay so before we go into showing the meter let's uh, look see if we can find some specifications on this pedal all right so let's go into the software here and I'm going to push on the question mark here for the pulse width modulation signals so I'm going to push on the uh, question mark and as we can see at the very bottom here it says that the sensor output signal it's pulse width modulated and it operates at a value of 180 to 220 hertz okay so what you can do is to check each signal wire it's a quick check you can take your digital volt ohm meter you can put it on frequency and then make sure that each signal wire is putting out this frequency from the pedal okay so if you look at my uh, multimeter here on the multimeter here uh, I'm on frequency and it's showing that on this one signal wire that I'm checking I have just a little bit over uh, 200 Hertz okay so I'm gonna switch wires and put it on the other one and we'll look at the frequency of that wire as well okay so I changed the connection and now I'm on the other wire and it's a little it's a little bit lower but it's still within specification okay now here's something else that you're gonna notice when you're checking frequency on this type of pedal okay uh, you would think that when you press on the pedal you would see a change in frequency but you don't with this style okay so the only change that you're gonna see is if you put your meter on duty cycle to see a percentage of change okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press on the pedal and just prove to you that there's not really that much frequency change okay so I pressed on the pedal all the way down and I let off and as you can see there's not much change in that uh, that frequency signal okay so now what I'm going to show you is uh, it's another quick check I can take this multimeter 
and I can switch it to duty cycle percentage and then what it's gonna do is, it's gonna exactly match what you see on your software. Okay, so let me go back, go to my gauge, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this multimeter uh, to duty cycle. So right here you can see I'm at 10.2%. So I'm on signal uh, PWM number one. And on the software it shows exactly the same, 10%. Okay, so now I'm going to move the pedal and you're going to see a change in the percentage on the software and then a change in percentage on your voltmeter. All right. So I press down on the pedal, and as you can see, the change in duty cycle on your meter is matching what the computer is seeing, okay? So how does this help you? Well, how this helps you is you've now verified that what the computer is seeing is what your meter is seeing, all right? So that tells you that the wire is intact, okay? So this is a very quick and easy check to do. You're just using your multimeter. You're gonna set it to duty cycle. You're gonna take your red multimeter lead, go into that signal wire, take your black lead and ground it to a known good ground. You're gonna then push on the pedal and, re and release it and make sure that those values relatively stay the same, okay? So that's just a quick check that you can do with your multimeter. Now, uh, the next question I bet you have is, well, what would we see in voltage, Michael? Well, you can see a change in voltage, but as I said before, the software doesn't give you that specification, so how do you know what's good and how do you know what's bad, okay? But I will switch it to volts and I will show that to you. All right, so we're on signal uh, number one, and it's showing we have a voltage of 1.259 volts, okay? So I'm going to push on the pedal, and that is the maximum voltage that you're going to see on this style of pedal, okay? So this accelerator pedal is in a, uh, a Peterbilt 2014 model and it has a uh, Packard MX-13 engine and the accelerator pedal isn't uh, connected directly to the engine it, it's actually connected through the uh, the, ca the cabin module and then that data is then transmitted over the J1939 communication network so that's how it's getting its signal okay so it's not a hardwired signal this is data that's processed over the can and then sent to the engine computer, okay? So that, this is how this system works, all right? So now that I've shown you that, um, we've done, I've done, I've shown you duty cycle, the voltage, and then I've also showed you the frequency, but I bet what your next question is, well, why are we not seeing a change in frequency? Well, that has to do with the set frequency that's coming out of the pedal, okay? So you can, uh, when you move the pedal, you will uh, not change the frequency of it. You'll only see a change in the duty cycle, all right? So to, to illustrate this concept, I have the oscilloscope hooked up right now. So let me go to the oscilloscope. Okay, so now I hooked up uh, the other trace. So on the, on the scope here, uh, signal number one is the yellow trace up top on the first scope screen, and then the uh, second accelerator signal is on the bottom, and that's in purple, okay? So what I'm going to show you is when I press on the pedal here, you're going to see a change just in the on time of the signal, the duty cycle but the frequency is always going to stay the same on this design, 
All right. So I'm going to push on the pedal and then let off, and then I'll uh, I'll show you the measurements. Okay. So I'm pressing on the pedal, and as you notice, the top screen, the uh, the duty cycle of the signal is increasing in voltage. So if you look at the very top line on the yellow trace, it is widened out. So that signal is then staying on longer and it's averaging longer. And that's why you're seeing a change in voltage on your multimeter, all right? And if you look at the bottom, the bottom is doing the same thing, except with the bottom, the uh, length of time that the signal is pulled down to ground is different okay so the purple trace when it pulls to ground when it's going uh, downward the pulse is way smaller okay but then when I let off of the paddle the negative on time okay going downward is on longer between this point and this point here, okay? So, like I said, you could see a change in on time, but you cannot see a change uh, in the frequency of the signal, all right? And I'm gonna prove that here. So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to uh, measure deep record. Okay, I stopped the scope. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go into some different areas here of the scope capture. And I'm going to measure the, uh, the cycle of the signal, so the frequency. And in order to do that, I just go to cursors here. And on this first trace, this signal design is for, this is for number one. It starts its cycle on the rising edge. And then you have to go back to the beginning of the next cycle for the rising edge. That's one complete cycle. And then if we look down here at the bottom for frequency, we're at 200 hertz. Okay? So now I'm going to do the same measurement on the purple trace. So I'm just going to shut off the yellow here for a second so we can see the purple. And now I'm going to measure from the falling edge... Okay, so falling edge here to uh, the falling edge here. And here we have 200 hertz again, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another part of the capture where we'll be able to see the width of this signal change on the purple and the yellow. Okay, so let's uh, go through this capture here and let's uh, take a look here at the end. Okay, so right here, the length of this width here has changed at the end. 
Actually, let me get back out of here. So if we go to the front, and if you look at my purple trace, the time it's pulled down is way less here, okay? So now, and I already did a measurement there and showed the frequency between these two cursors here, and it comes out a little, yeah, little bit over 200 hertz, okay? So now, if I go to the very end here, If you notice here, the bottom, the pulse, has lengthened out, okay? You also see a change, a difference in change of the length of the pulse on the yellow trace. If you look here, when it, the yellow trace is going up, the distance between these two is now less, all right? So if I just zoom in on a little snippet here, we can see now that the yellow, the gap in the yellow is not as much now, but then the pull down for the purple the gap is way wider, okay? So if I take my uh, cursors again, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the two, there's, there's no difference. So if I measure here on this purple one for when it pulls down, and then I'm gonna go to the next uh, pull down event, so I pull it down, and then it goes back up and then down again. That's one cycle, about 200 hertz, all right? Now, if I check this one for signal one, we go off of the rising edge, and then we look at this cycle. So from positive, back down, positive again, we're at about 200 hertz again. Number one's just a tad bit lower, but it's, pretty much spot on, okay? So this proves that when you change your duty cycle, your on time, your frequency of your signal on this design, it does not change, okay? So that's the difference. And that's the reason why you also see a change in your voltage between the two signal wires, because what happens is, for example, on the yellow trace, when this voltage value here stays on longer when it expands out. Your multimeter is able to average enough to pick up that voltage, okay? And the same thing goes for this, for the purple trace as well. They work both on the same concept, all right? So, um, yes, you can use a DVOM uh, with duty cycle, and then you can check it with Hertz to check it, but the problem is, you're not actually going to see the actual signal that that pedal is really putting out, okay? And also, if you have a problem with your pedal where you're having um, a glitch, you probably won't be able to catch it with a digital volt ohm meter, okay? So you can use the volt meter for quick checks, for go, no go, for if you got something that's like, like bad, like toast. But if it's an intermittent issue, you're not going to be able to catch it on a multimeter, okay? If you do, then you're lucky, <laughs> okay? So, but anyway, I thought I would just explain this. Um, this is for how you test a pulse with modulated um, accelerator pedal. Um, if anyone has any questions about what was shown today in this video, you can contact us uh, through our website. It's www.training.diesellaptops.com. And uh, just give us a shout out and ask away. That's what we're here for. And uh, I look forward to uh, hearing from everybody if you have any questions, okay? Thank you very much.